Hi, I'm James. And I'm Anthony. And this is Words and Numbers. How are you doing this week, Ant? I'm doing all right, James. Yeah, you're you're doing all right, and apparently, if if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, so are American workers, because this past week or so, the Department of Labor has yet again told us that um, fewer Americans are unemployed, or at least that's what we would be led to believe. That's right. The the big news, uh, the April job numbers came out, and according to the Department of Labor, um, 4.4 percent of uh, Americans are unemployed. Um, so this is, this is, of course, good news. A 4.4% unemployment rate is, is indicative of a relatively healthy economy. Sure. And, you know, I think what we have to do is set aside uh, political statements that were made during the primaries because those are at, at distinct odds with um, presidential pronouncements on the matter, right? So every president, for as long as I can remember, has said over and over again, I think almost every month, certainly every quarter, unemployment is down yet again. And and yet that seems somehow not to be right or not to be possible. So let's start unpacking this. Right. So so if, to, to unpack it, we, we might go back to 2010 and notice something interesting. There was a, there was a period of time, maybe maybe six months, maybe nine months, in which we had the same kind of news we're hearing now: unemployment down, unemployment down. Every jobs report that came out said that unemployment w- was w- was improving, and and yet people went out, reporters went out and talked to to people in the street and said, "What do you think about the economy?" And consistently, the guy in the street said, "No, I don't think things are getting better." And so for a long stretch of time, we had this contradiction of the jobs numbers saying things are getting better and the man in the street saying that, no, I don't think things are getting better at all. And if you dig into that data, what you'll find are weird things like for a stretch of time, unemployment drops, drops, drops. But if you look at the jobs numbers, the jobs numbers are holding steady or they're actually falling. That's inconsistent, right? If unemployment is dropping, you should see jobs going up. Now, now, Ant, I'm no statistician. I, I will cheerfully stipulate to this. But even I know that that's impossible, right? That unemployment cannot go down simultaneous with jobs going down in, uh, in a population that is remaining constant or growing. Right. And, and so what happens here is it, it, the whole the answer hinges on the definition of unemployment. And this is where, where many people get it wrong when, when they think about unemployment. We imagine that, that Americans fall into one of two categories. You're either employed or you're unemployed, right? You have a job or you don't have a job. And, and in fact, there's a third category. And, and a lot of Americans fall into the third category. It's what economists call non-employed. And a non-employed person is a person who doesn't have a job, but also is not actively looking for one. So you can imagine, you know, natural uh, people you put into that group, uh, the elderly who are retired, they don't have jobs, they're not looking for jobs. Full-time students, they don't have jobs, they're not looking for jobs, right? But interestingly, another group that falls into this category are people who have been unemployed for so long they figured that it's just not worth looking anymore. These are people who actually do want jobs, but they've given up the search because they, they figure it's fruitless. We, we have a name for this. We call this discouraged workers. And, and so what happens so, is, if, if you look at the numbers, what was going on back in 2010, is that there were people who were unemployed for so long, they gave up looking for jobs, and we stopped counting them. That's why the unemployment rate was falling. All right, well, this should actually give us enough to start working with, right? Because once we've got the categories established, we can start making comparisons over time, apples to apples, right? And and we may stipulate that these categories are not perfect, they're not great, but they might be the best we can do, given the nature of, of this data. Yeah, that, right? that, but, that's absolutely right. There is no good way to do this, right? They're just competing um, inadequate ways. But one thing... All right, so we... So we're dealing with a largely inadequate method of of counting, but it it at least gives us something to work with, and we can actually compare things over time. So let's compare things over time, and let's stick within, you know, the 2007, putting us right before the Great Recession, to 2017 period, so we've got data from then, 
to literally what the Bureau of Labor gave us last week. Right. What do, what do we what do we see when we start looking at this data with no political axe to grind? Yeah, and I, I think that's the right way to do it. Compare. Let's talk about what was going on just prior to the Great Recession compared to what's going on now. So just prior to the Great Recession, uh, if you look at fifteen Americans fifteen to sixty four years old, so that's you know the the core working uh, age groups, s- almost seventy two percent of them were in the labor force. And what I mean by that is 72% of 15 to 64 year olds were either employed or unemployed. They were either had a job or they didn't have a job, but they were actively looking, 72% of them. Now today, that number is less than 70%. Now that difference of maybe 2% doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking about 200 million people in the workforce, it turns into about 4.8 million people. That is, excuse me, 4.3, about 4.3 million 15 to 64 year olds who back in 2007 would have been in the labor force, either looking actively for a job or or holding a job. Today, those 4.3 million are gone. We're not counting them anymore. We count that they they are the non-employed. All right, so things are pretty grim on that note. Um, what can you tell us about people who are in fact employed? Well, the ones then who, to now. Yeah, the ones who are employed, you know, we count them, they're employed, and we talk about the jobs numbers and, and they appear there. And then we, we talk about the people who are unemployed and we can count those and they're here as well. So if you take the employed and the unemployed, you put them together, 4% of that, 4.4% is unemployed. But what about these 4.3 million out here? The people who, prior to the Great Recession, they were actually part of the workforce, and now we're no longer counting them. Well, if you put them back into the mix, and you say, look, these are people who used to be in the labor force, they aren't in the labor force now, let's count them as unemployed. All of a sudden, you find that the actual unemployment rate isn't 4.4%, it's about 65 all right, so we've got about 6.5% unemployment right now, and I guess we would open parentheses and say actual. Yeah, actual, with, I guess right. with, the, with the big footnote that, remember, there's no good way to measure this, right? So, right. so, what, we're, so what we're doing here is saying, look, if the world today looked like it did back in 2007, there'd be another 4.3 million people on the unemployment rolls. Right, so w- what if we got... Over that same period, right over that same period of time, what does that number look like year to year? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it relatively flat? Yeah, well, that's a good question. It is going down. Um, it, it's going down nicely from the Great Recession. But I, I think that the take-home message here is uh, the, the Great Recession was not restricted to 2008, 2009. It's something that, the, that we've been feeling the ramifications of all these years later, what is it now? Eight years, nine years since since the housing crash? And still, we're feeling things like we're discussing now. Uh, people who right. have been knocked out of the labor force for so long that, that we just don't count them anymore. Right. It, it has been, you know, a series of, of distinct ripples since the events of 2007, 8, 9. Um, that, that do still kind of pollute the waters when we think about all financial things. And it, it's a little more pronounced even than we've let on, right? Because when you think about things like unemployment, the length of time that people remain unemployed has changed over these past 10, 11 years as well, and not for the better. Yeah, so going back to, you know, as far back as the data reliably goes, the, the 60s or so, what you find is the median unemployed person is unemployed for about seven weeks, right? So you take some people are un- some of the unemployed are unemployed longer, some of the unemployed are unemployed uh, shorter, but the, mid- the middle person, the guy in the middle, the median unemployed worker is unemployed for about seven weeks. That's prior to the Great Recession. Come the Great Recession, that number jumped to 22 weeks. The median unemployed person was unemployed for 22 weeks. Now that number has been falling but it has been falling slowly. We're now at about 10 weeks. So even today, nine years later, the median unemployed person has been unemployed for 10 weeks versus what would have been seven weeks prior to the Great Recession. Right, and this is where all those discouraged workers are found, right? The, in, the, in the category discouraged worker. Yeah. This is literally where they all are. 
Yeah, and, and you, you can start to see this if you look at it from, from the perspective of the discouraged worker. If you have been looking for work and getting rejection, rejection after rejection for 10 weeks or more in a row, at some point you say, why am I beating my head against the wall here? I could at least be home, you know, watching TV or playing with the kids or cooking or whatever it is I, I do, rather than going out and being constantly rejected. And the minute you say that, you're now counted as the non-employed. We don't count you anymore. Here's one less unemployed person. Well, you know what? It really should be an unemployed person. Right, because by any rational definition of the term, that's exactly what these people are. Exactly. So in the grand scheme of things, really what we've got here is, as is almost always the case, a mixed bag with unemployment, right? Over time, yeah, things are getting somewhat better, but they're getting somewhat better very, very slowly. And as president after president has come along and claimed victory after victory here, well, that, that's all more or less nonsense, right? This, this is a long, drawn-out process that is just going to run its course. Yeah, I, I think that, that's absolutely right. Things are, without question, getting better. But we are not back yet to where we were prior to 2008. Right, so... Really, what we've got now is the inexorable march back to where we were, if we're lucky. Yeah, and so, you know, people are going to pin their hopes on this president or that president. And, and frankly, I don't, I don't think that the person who's sitting in the Oval Office matters all that much. It's not a function of the person. It, it's, it's largely a function of what government is doing. The harder government makes it for entrepreneurs to start and maintain businesses, the harder the government makes it for, for lesser educated, lesser skilled people to get their foot in the door in the workforce, the harder those things are, the fewer jobs we're going to end up creating. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's a really nice way to end this week. And really what you're saying is what we often say, both here and in print, when things are going well, presidents tend to get too much of the credit. When things are going poorly, presidents tend to get too much of the blame. Right. All right. So that that's all we've got. Thanks for watching this episode of Words and Numbers. Be sure to come on back next week, usually Wednesdays, usually around about noon, when we'll be back with another topic uh, drawn from the headlines. If you like this episode, subscribe to the channel and check us out at fee.org and at fee online on social media. Till next week, Ant, take it easy. I'll see you later. See you next week, James.